Have you ever had a dream bike when you were growing up that you were never able to attain? Well, today, that all changes for me because I've finally found my holy grail. All right, <clears throat> I finally found myself a Zaskar. This is pretty much the holy grail as far as hardtails go if you're a GT collector. Um, this is an absolute shed find. Um, it's an Anno Blue one. It's been kept in the shed for a long time. So as you can see, the anodizing is a little bit faded, but when you go like that, it cleans up. Um, I got this off the, the original owner who bought this over from the UK. And he bought this when he was 18 or something. So, he, so he's the original owner since 94. It's got like a knockoff shorty. Um, uh, it's got a set of Azonics on it. Uh, the duties are pretty much blown out. As you can see, zip tied them up. Um, these are quite faded too, but I reckon these will polish up pretty good. It's got a it's got a strange mix of parts on it. It's got an old uh, Dior crank on it. These are like early early nineties Dior's, and it's obviously got, it's got some Talon rings on it. Um, these look like they were anodized. It's a pretty cool crank actually. You can see like how much the anodization has faded. This would look pretty cool back in the day. Um, Strange that it's a Zaskar LE with Dior parts on it because these come stock with uh, XTR M900 on it. So XT rear derailleur. Yep. Yeah, so she's a uh, 1994 um, Dior seat. Um, a relatively latish model saddle on it. Uh, it's got also got the Dior DX, DX uh, shifters on it. I think they're called X lights. Um, yeah, X-Lights, some XT levers. So a bit of a mixed bag of parts, <clears throat> but it's a Zaskar, and this for me is the holy grail of hard tiles. So I'm going to give this a bit of a wash up. This is an absolute uh, shed find. This is going to be an awesome, an awesome project for me. Um, I doubt I'm going to put XTR on it only purely because I haven't got any XTR 900. I've only got 950. And finding the XTR 900 is super expensive. So let's just, I reckon I'll just build this bike so I can ride it. Um, I'm going to build it up most probably with XT 737 on it. See, I reckon that this bike will be like a, like a, a ongoing rolling project um, that will probably evolve a lot over the time of my ownership, which will probably be forever because once you've got a Zaskar, you never let it go. Meaning me, you complete me. Uh-huh. Stay tuned. These were once black. Look how much fade is on there. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm just taking the cable thing off. And for some reason, I'm gonna to have to, I'm drilling through that because someone put a rivet there instead of a screw. Where it's no real problem, but I'm just gonna to have to gently drill, drill that out and then drill the center out as well and hopefully not mess up the thread. And I might be able to get a screw to go back in there. Here's Johnny. Yeah, so I think I've got it out. Um, didn't film that because I'll probably get kicked off of YouTube because that was basically horror. Uh, using a drill bit on a Zaskar frame. Oh, it's quite unnerving, but I think that could be it. Um, 
it's as it's really faded and you can see that that is the original blue and around the chain stays and then just in around the um like the little brake bosses you can see the original ink blue color that it was and um so i'm basically going to take this to the anodizers and i'm going to get this re-anodized the original color so i was going to leave it as is but it is a little bit it's good but it's a little bit rough and faded so i'm definitely going to get new decals for it because i'm going to get it re-anodized i was going to get decals anyway but I've basically rang, rang up and found out how much it is to get this bike re-anodized, which is 150 Australian dollars, which is roughly 70 or 80 US or whatever. So that is really cheap. So it's a lot cheaper than what I thought. And I figured being a Zaskar and this is the dream bike, I'm gonna basically do it. So stay tuned. We'll get this off to the anodizers in a couple of days and see what they say. It will be a shame to lose these original decals, but at least you can still get these decals, so that's cool. I'd rather this thing be in amazing showroom condition. I would rather have it looking absolutely primo. So stay tuned. Okay, so here at DC Anodizing, and I'm gonna drop the uh, Zaskar in to get uh, a quote and see if I can get how, see if I can get this thing uh, anodized uh, back to its original glory. Um, I'm also going to anodize some chain rings as well, which came on the crank, so that might actually make them to the uh, to the Tequesta. So we'll head in and uh, check it out. Well, no luck. Um, just been in there, and my frame doesn't fit in their anodizing bath, which is basically a wheelie bin. So um, back to the drawing board. For now, I've just got to put up with the faded anodizing. Um, I probably will still order a decal set because it needs new decals. And then I guess, yeah, that's life. It's faded. So unless I can find somewhere else. But um, good thing is they did take the chain ring, so I'll get them re-anode red. But um, not too sure if that crank's going to make it back onto the Zaskar. I'm thinking I might keep those cranks for the Tequesta. But anyway, stay tuned. So I've had these Judy DHs sitting for a while and now I finally get to use them. Okay, so just a quick one. I'm halfway through pulling these Judy's apart because I'm going to put some springs in there because the elastomers were completely shot. And to get these out, what happens is uh, the elastomers um, fall apart and crumble and they just get full. And what happens is they get stuck. So probably not a good idea but what I did is I actually drilled into the elastomers a little bit until they turn to powder. And then you basically just empty them out into the bin. And you will get some of that residue stuff, but totally up to you. I wouldn't recommend it, but it worked. That mess, you know, the okay, so excuse the mess. So it's gonna have uh, XT737 uh, group set. Uh, it does have the XT739 V brakes and also 737 uh, Durala. So I'm going to go full XT with her um, for now until I can find some XTR900, but I'm not 100% positive I'm going to be able to do that because it's super expensive and hard to find. So now all that's left is just to put the bike back together.
So looking at the bike now that it's been sort of render built, I don't think that the red rock shots duty suit it. So I'm gonna put, I've got a set of XCs and I reckon that the blue and the silver, all blue or silver will suit better. I think the red are better forks, but they just, they're a little bit too bold. So I'm gonna put the duty XCs on and see how that looks. Okay, so stay tuned yet again. I really love that feeling of standing back and having a good look at it once you've finished. Um, having a good look at the transformation between how it was before and how it's turned out. So now there's basically one thing left to do and let's go outside and look at it in the light. Yeah, so that's it, that's the finished product. Well, so far the finished product, but yeah, um, thanks for watching. Um, really chuffed with the way it turned out. The XT actually does look pretty good. The silver and the faded blue do match. I'm actually really glad that I didn't take it to the anodizers to get it done because I have seen some bikes on, on, the, on the Instagram and the ones that have been redone look a little bit overdone a little bit too rich in colour, whereas this is sort of like a faded, almost bull burnish, but with a bit of blue, so chuffed. I've got uh, the Mavic uh, 217s with the uh, Hadley hubs in primo condition. They haven't been restored, they're still in good condition. The seat, uh, the post, the carbon bars, the duties work excellent. So now there's only one more thing left to do, and that's get this thing out and ride. And in the end, I got to keep my stickers.